Yeah, in case you haven't noticed, I'm acting Frankenstein. Yes, because we are going over I Frankenstein, or I Sexy, as I like to put it, because, let's face it, Aaron Eckhart, he's a pretty man. He's a pretty, pretty man. Yeah, so let's go. Maybe a few years, maybe to the 1940s may suit your fancy. Because that's where it all began. The film career of the most hated and most loved monster ever to grace the pre our presence. Uh, Mary, Mary Shelley wrote the novel on this creature. Um, her fantastic novel has spawned over countless, and I mean countless, of adaptations of it or of the character, uh, if I can add. Uh, so I clearly was uh, so I clearly was invested into this film. Uh, I, it wasn't need it wasn't a need as it was more of a want to see this film. I mean I, I just a add the monster to a never ending list of classic monsters I love to watch. You know alongside of Dracula, Creature from Black Lagoon, the Mummy. I mean the list goes on. But there was a a, a must to be in that theater seat because uh, it's a classic movie. Uh, classic. Uh, movie uh, monster. Now, so I'm guessing what you're asking now is how does it rank with the other film adaptations or character adaptations? Well, I'll tell you. It's nothing like you've ever actually seen before. It's actually completely different from what you've seen. It's different from any normal Frankenstein monster-based film you've, uh, you've witnessed. Uh, I'm actually completely serious here. From the trailers alone, you can actually tell uh, it's the monster... You know we, you know we like and we've we've never seen before. Um, for starters, he's way more sexier than usual. Um, there's some things that I did like about this film, but there was one feature that caught my eye, which was the uh, it was the modernization uh, take on the monster because they like they bring in cell phones, they bring in computers, they bring they bring in a whole other science element into this. Um, but not m so much of the story, which actually, uh, now that I think about it, uh, the concept, the story was interesting in itself. Basically, it starts off with him saying goodbye and burying, and burying Dr. Frankenstein. You know, he's putting him in a grave. It basically takes off from when he dies. Um, and then that's where the story goes a bit on the crazy course. Now, of course, uh, it, start, it actually starts a whole new section in the monster's lore. Now, if you're a fan of the monster, uh, if you're a fan of the monster's other films, um, it th this is where the the story is a is this is the same as its as its previous showing. Now, that's the big reason why I wanted to see this film. Nobody knows what happens after the death, after the death of Doctor Frankenstein, and that's what Stuart Beetle does in this uh, in in his uh, interpretation of what might ha what might have happened. To the monster, and for those who don't, uh, who don't know, who wrote actually, uh, he wrote the Pir uh, Lego Pirates game, GI Joe, Derailed, uh, Collateral, not to mention the next Pirates of the Caribbean. So, you know, you, you definitely have incentive here that that you know that's right there in the writing, you know, and, and it was actually great to see a, a good writer in something completely off his off his game. Now. As well as the writing, it, it was visually amazing as well, and as creative, uh, as well as creative, and had a good casting. Now, all great aspects of this film. I especially love the visuality of it. Now, when some of the characters would switch between uh, the from creature to human or vice versa, it it was actually very fluent. There was no lag, pixelation, or distortion. You know, which just made it even more of a win for a good film. Uh, you know, it, it was just really good. Now, the casting was good. I actually did enjoy it. Um, you know, I like Eckhart, especially, uh, the beautiful Yvonne Strahovski. You might know her from NBC's Chuck, as I do, as that's when I first saw her. Um, so the thing is, I, I don't, the, the thing is, I didn't like the fact that Eckhart was the monster. He was too pretty. Laugh at, uh, if you will at that, you know, because I did. You know, but he's too much of a model model face for a, for the monster's character. Now, if you get what I'm trying to say here, is I keep saying the monster or Dr. Frankenstein. I like, in the movie, they actually brought, they, they don't bring up the fact, that fact, but actually, there are two aspects that they brought to the film that are actually in the book and in the, and in the older generations of the film, basically calling him, uh, Adam, which is what he's, uh, his name is really known 
as it's in, unless uh, they call him the monster. He's actually his alter name is Adam, and um, you know, I, I the thing is that everyone calls the monster Frankenstein, and that's not true. The monster was the monster or Adam. It wasn't Doctor Frankenstein was his his creator, and that's what this movie did. They call him the monster or Adam. Which is what the angels gave him, which I or the uh, I'm sorry, the gargoyles did, which I found very interesting in this film to do. Now, if you know, like, like I said, he's too much. Uh, Aaron Eckhart, look, I like him as an actor, but he was, like I said, he was too much of a model for that character. Now I know what you're wondering. Hey, what? Like, like I said, look, call him the monster, call him Adam. Do not call him. Doctor uh, Frankenstein, because that's not his name. I know he's not a real character, uh, you know, a real person, but in my world, in my mind, you know, in in reading Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and seeing Mary uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, you know, De Niro uh, was Frankenstein in one of them. I believe that one actually, you know, it, you know, the characters speak to me in a, in in a, in a way where I actually have to be respectful of that character, and that's what I really liked about this film. So I actually do recommend this film. Um, it's actually a really interesting take on it. If you're especially, especially if you're into that sort of thing, please check it out. I guarantee you will not, uh, regret it. Um, so, but you should also not regret, please just like subscribing to my channel. You can do that in the description below because apparently YouTube is being a dick and not letting me put buttons all over my magical screen here. Um, but, oh, thank you. Here's some breaking news. Gare Barians, our next adventure will be Lego Movie. So stay tuned, you Lego creators, you master builders of wonder. Stay tuned.